Let's now finish this problem because the problem was asking what is the pH and what is the percent hydrolysis. So the pH is equal to the negative log of the activity of hydronium, H3O+, plus, negative log of, well the activity is equal to gamma plus minus times the molality of H3O+. Plus. That means I have the negative log of 0 0.892 times 0 0.0106. And so when I evaluate this, I get 2.024. And if I calculate my percent ionization, well, that's just equal to the molality of H3O plus divided by the molality of the original acid, or the original concentration of the acid times 100%. And so that's 0 0.0106 divided by 0 0.1 times 100%, which leaves me with 10.6%. So here's the neat thing that we actually just calculated. Recall from before that we had our percent ionization in the ideal case was 9.5%. And in this case now, now that we have our real, real system, we have a slightly higher percent hydrolysis, meaning that we have slightly more H3O plus in solution. And that's because we have ions in solution, which then shields the ions from each other, which then allows for a greater solubility of these ions in solution. And so we actually, in reality, have a slightly higher concentration of H3O plus. But over here, when we calculate the pH, remember our pH in the ideal case, that was equal to 2.022. And in now that we have our value based on the fact that we have ions in solution, our pH actually went up, meaning that it was this solution is actually less acidic than what we would have predicted in the ideal case. And the reason for that is that because the it's based on not the concentration of H3O+, but it's actually based on the activity of H3O+, then what that means is that even though the concentration of H3O+, got higher because of the ions in solution, its effective concentration, meaning its activity, got lower because the ions that were in solution, the H3O+, is partially shielded by the other ions in solution, meaning that their effect is diminished. And that's what gives us then this pH that's actually higher, meaning more neutral, than what we got in the ideal scenario, which is what we calculated at the beginning of this problem. In light of this, let's actually draw a quick table. Where in this table, what I'm going to have is we'll have four cases. We'll have the ideal case that we calculated as the initial problem in this lecture. We have the real case, which is what we just calculated a second ago. If we were to do this in 0.6 molar sodium chloride solution, which is about what um, seawater is, the concentration of salt in seawater, and then a more concentrated salt solution, 2.5 molar NaCl. And I'm only doing this just so that we can compare basically what the concentration of um, the hydronium is in the solution, what is our average activity coefficient, our percent ionization, and finally, what is the pH that we predict to measure it for these solutions. And I can fill in the top two rows because we've just calculated these numbers, 0 0.0095, the gamma plus minus was 1 because we said it was ideal. This had a percent ionization of 9.5%. And the pH that we expect to measure would be 2.022. In the real solution, we calculated the concentration of hydronium to be 0 0.0106. Our gamma plus minus, our average activity coefficient, is 8.92. Our percent hydrolysis is 10.6%, so it's slightly more soluble. And then we have a pH of 2.024, a slightly higher pH, because the effective concentration due to the average activity coefficient reduces the effect of the ions. Finally, if we did calculate it for the 0.6 and the 0.25 molar, what we would get for our x is 0 0.0126. We would get an activity coefficient of 0.741. Our percent hydrolysis would be 12.6%. And our pH that we would calculate for this case is even higher, 2.030. And finally, if we had a very strong salt solution, our concentration of hydronium is 0 0.008136. Our average activity coefficient is above 1 now, 1.178. We have a percent hydrolysis of 8.14%. 
And finally, our pH that we would calculate from these numbers is 2.018. So looking at these numbers, we can actually see two trends. Or at least I want you to take away two trends from this. The first one is, is that we can see the salting in and salting out of the hydronium. And we can see this in terms of both looking at the concentration of H3O+, plus, which is what this X essentially is referring to, and we can see it here in our percent ionization, where as we increase the concentration of ions in solution, and that's basically what happens as we go down this table, we have our ions become more soluble. And this is from the screening that we saw in the previous lecture, where we have positive charges being surrounded by negative charges. And what that means is that then screens them all the, all the like charges from each other, which means more can be dissolved in the solution. However, as we continue to increase the number of ions in solution, we can see that the solubility of the ions goes down. And this is because we have so many like charges that they cannot be screened by the opposite charge as well anymore, which makes them less soluble. The second thing that we can see is that the pH in this case moves in a, in a not intuitive way, meaning that as we get a higher amount of um, ions in solution, of H3O plus in solution, our pH actually goes up instead of down, which is what we would expect intuitively, is that if we increase the amount of H3O plus in solution, then our pH should go down. But if what we calculate is that our pH actually goes up. And this is because, again, we're multiplying this concentration by the, acti the average activity coefficient to get an, uh, an effective concentration. And what that means is that our pHs then move in a different direction than what we would expect. And that this even continues that when we have supersaturated solutions with a salt, the pH then even goes down when our percent ionization has also gone down, which again is not intuitive. However, the key takeaway that I want you to take away from this is that the values that we have here for our pH are not significantly different from each other, at least not in a meaningful way. And so that's the second point I want you to take away is that the pHs only change very little when we account for real solutions.